Hello, this is the recorded lesson for the distributive property. This is a pre-algebra unit 5 lesson 1 um, on the distributive property. So let's go ahead and get started with this. We are going to learn about the distributive property. That's the main objective for today. And one of the things that we will be using is we'll definitely be looking at order of operations as part of what we'll be doing today. All right, the distributive property is basically this, in a nutshell. When you have something like this negative 3, for example, on the outside of the parentheses, you have to distribute that number to each term inside of the parentheses. In other words, you need to multiply negative 3 times 4, and you have to multiply negative 3 times 2. All right, so let's go ahead and solve that. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12 and negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. When we join those together, you get negative 18. Now, to show that this property really doesn't change the value of anything, we could, in this case, also join together the terms inside the parentheses first. Negative 3 times 4 plus 2 is 6, and that would give us negative 18. So you see here that the result is the same, but in some cases we'll definitely need to use the distributive property, but in some instances it helps to do mental math this way because it'll save us a little bit of time, and I'll show you how that works in just a little bit. But right now I just wanted us to get a little bit of practice using that distributive property. So here let's do another question. 3 on the outside of the parentheses, and then we have negative 4 plus 2. What I'm going to do is the, use the distributive property. 3 times negative 4 gives me negative 12. And 3 times positive 2 gives me positive 6. And when I join those two terms together, different signs, we find the difference. The difference between 12 and 6 is 6. And the sign comes from the larger absolute value. So the sign comes from the negative 12. Our final answer for this is negative 6. And we could have joined together negative 4 and positive 2. We would have had negative 2 times 3, which would give us negative 6. So we're not changing the value. We're just solving in a different way. The distributive property is actually one of the properties that we use quite often going into Algebra 1. So knowing how to use it will be very beneficial. Here's some examples where you really can't join together what's inside the parentheses. And so in these cases, whenever you have a variable here, you definitely need to use that distributive property. Um, just a little caution, a word of caution. I have often seen the most common mistake for this is that people will take this number 2 and multiply it times the first term inside the parentheses and then stop at that point. So they will write something like 2n minus 4. And that's not correct. We have to remember that this 2 is being multiplied times everything inside of those parentheses. It's being distributed to each term. 2 times n, 2n, 2 times negative 4, negative 8. All right, that is how we solve these problems. And that is your final answer for that. You can't solve it any farther than that. You can't join together 2n and negative 8 because we don't know what n means. That means you have two of those minus 8. We don't know what those are, so we can't do anything else. Those are not the same, what we call like terms. They're not like terms, so we can't join them together. This is as far as we can go. That's our final answer. Let's do another one here with our distributing. Negative 4 times n gives us negative 4n, and negative 4 times 3 gives us negative 12. Notice how important this is to know the properties of multiplying with negatives. You're going to see this over and over and over. What happens when I multiply a negative times a positive? All right, you'll see that over and over. Here's a positive times a negative. All of the things that we've learned so far in class are going to come into play as we apply them to using the distributive property. All right, again, 4n minus 12 is your final answer. You cannot join these terms because they are not like terms. They're different.
there's four ends and there's minus twelve. It's like there's four bananas or four apples or four eights or four nines. We don't know what n is, but we know that there's negative four of them, and then we have to take away twelve. So we can't join those together. All right. Let's do things in in a different way now. In the previous slide, what we've been doing is multiplying negative 4 times n, negative 4 times positive 3. In this slide, we're given, or in these types of questions, we're given that 3 times 4 plus 3 times n. When you're given those, what we're going to do is rewrite them kind of like the opposite of the distributive property. 3 times 4 plus 3 times n could be written as 3 times 4 plus n. What I'm doing is I'm taking the part that's common in both of these multiplication questions, 3, and I'm putting that outside the parentheses and 4 plus n goes on the inside. Now, we can resolve in reverse just to double check our work here and make sure that what we're seeing is correct. 3 times 4 and 3 times n. Or in other words, we would say 12 plus 3n. Right, you see that? So this is, again, this is working from what we did earlier, 3 times 4, 3 times n, 3 times 4, 3 times n. So we can kind of work in reverse. Go ahead and give this one a shot. You can pause the recording and try and figure out how would I rewrite this one, this expression, so that I'm using grouping symbols. Test questions and textbook practice questions will we'll state it this way. Rewrite each expression with grouping symbols. That means parentheses. Okay, hopefully you went ahead and paused that, gave yourself some time to practice it. I'm going to take the term that's common between both and I'm going to put that out front and I'm going to multiply it times the other two terms added together. x times y plus x times 3. Okay, and that's exactly how we're going to do rewriting expressions using these grouping symbols. The final type of question um, that we'll see using the distributive property is solving using mental math and the distributive property. And this one here is a little bit more tough. This one takes a little bit of practice. It really does. And actually, even before doing this question, how about we back up just a little bit? At this point in the lesson, what I'd like you to do is pause the recording and solve some problems that look like this. 2 times n minus 4. Questions like that are on page 156 of your textbook, and they're questions 1 through 6. So I'm going to write that down here. I want you to go to page 156 in your textbook and do questions 1 through 6, just the odd questions. Solve those questions so that you get some practice looking at the distributive property, because the practice is what's really going to solidify things. So go ahead and pause the recording and do that. Solve, again, question 1, 3, and 5. Just do three questions so that you can get practice using the distributive property. Okay, hopefully you went ahead and paused that. I'd also like to add questions 7, 9, and 11. Again, on page 156. So if you've finished the first group, now go ahead and solve these ones. They will also have the same basic ideas. You're using the distributive property. You're going to become familiar with them as you finish these questions. It should take you just a couple of minutes. So pause the recording and finish those questions right now so that you can feel comfortable doing the next type of questions. All right. Now, with rewriting expressions, that is in your textbook, again, section, the third section, that, and this will be questions 13 
through 20. You can just do the odd questions. And that's again on page 156. Take some time and practice this type of question. Okay, look at the examples that I put on the board here of rewriting the expression using grouping symbols. Each one of those questions will help you to solidify this idea. You really need to have this down before we go on to the next part, because the next part is applying the distributive property and actually solving some of these questions. So again, pause the recording, finish 13, 15, 17, 19, so finish four math questions real quick following the examples you see on the board here. All right, now we're going to do something that actually is an application of what we've learned. And if you don't understand the first parts or you haven't done those problems that I just suggested, you're really going to struggle with understanding this. I just need to tell you that up front because this is going to be a little bit challenging. Let's take a look at this. We're going to use the distributive property to help us solve problems using mental math. If I have something like 5 times 98, and this is, by the way, the reason why I can multiply so quickly in my head. I use this all the time. I really do. If I have a question like 5 times 98, I will break that into two parts because I don't know my 98 times tables. I don't know my 5 times tables up to 98. That's craziness. I don't memorize things that high. But what I do memorize is my 100 times tables. And 100 is pretty close to 98. In fact, 100 is 100 minus 2 is 98. So if I'm going to solve this, all I need to do really is say 5 times 100 minus 5 times 2. See that? I know what 5 times 100 is. I know what 5 times 2 is. So I can actually solve this and, and be able to do, in my head, 5 times 98. Really weird question, right? So it's 500 minus 10. So 5 times 98 is 490. And while you're doing this, you can check with a calculator. I, this part here, I'd prefer we use mental math alone. Um, but you can check your work. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But Try and solve these on your own first, okay? So if there's a number that's really close, like you have a larger number and there's something really close to that, you can go ahead and say, well, 98 is close to, it's like 100 minus 2. I know 5 times 100. I definitely know 5 times 2, right? So I can therefore solve this using mental math. Let's go ahead and look at the second question that we have here. This one here. 35 times 8. When you get one like this, you could make 35 into 40 minus 5 um, or 30 plus 5 if you want. But, and that works out okay, I guess, like 40 minus 5. But when I get a number that it's not obvious like, like this, I'll break it into tens and ones. In other words, exactly what I was saying earlier, 30 plus 5. But in this case, I'm not doing it because 30 is a real easy number to work with. I'm just breaking it into whatever 10s I have and whatever 1s I have. So my 10s go here and my 1s go here. Because I know 30 is equal to, thir or 35, I'm sorry, is equal to 30 plus 5. And now I'm going to multiply that times 8. Again, using the distributive property, only this time I have it written backwards, but it's the same thing. You can multiply forwards or backwards. So 8 times 3 is 24. I have that 0. 8 times 5 is 40. And then I add them together, 280. I didn't need a calculator. I would definitely have needed a calculator to do 35 times 8. I don't have my 35 times tables memorized. I don't have my 8 times tables memorized that high. But I know 8 times 3, and I know 8 times 5. So that means using mental math, I can figure out even those really big questions. Okay? So this is an application 
of the distributive property, which is why I wanted you to practice some of those questions before you got here. Because once you get to this point, if you haven't done any practice, it's going to be extremely challenging to actually get those questions. So for that section, you're going to use solve questions. Well, here, let's go ahead and look at what we're doing. We've already worked on problems 1 through 20 odd on page 156. We've already done those questions if you've been following the directions and you did the work during the recording. So what you're going to now do is finish questions 1, 21 through 27 odd and then 31 through 39 odd questions as well. These will help you to solidify the ideas we've talked about with the distributive property. You'll distribute, remember everything outside of the parentheses gets multiplied times everything inside the parentheses and you will see this repeated over and over and over. Okay? Remember those rules that we showed you throughout this? If you've got questions you can send a K-mail message or attend office hours, um, the math help time that is also available and posted in your announcements. When you've completed your homework questions, you will then finish the Unit 5 Lesson 1 assessment inside the online school. I hope this has been helpful for you and have a wonderful day.